everybody, and welcome back to Weather 4. Weather Geeks, it's Monday evening. It's already the ninth day of October, although it's felt more like November over the last few days. Chilly, chilly weather, uh, much more like about four weeks from now rather than the first week of October. And yeah, it was just a week ago we had highs in the lower 80s. What an abrupt change, as expected, at the end of last week, and especially over the weekend. We had 55 Saturday, 52 was the best we could do on Sunday. And today's high, 54, that's a full 11 degrees below the average for this time of the year. And yeah, lower middle 50s, that's more typical of the first 10 days or so of the month of November. Here's a look at our average highs during meteorological fall. We dropped from 79 on September 1st to 44 for an average high on the final day of November. Those are the long-term averages. Of course, our daily weather varies quite a bit. And our weather today was fairly cloudy, particularly this afternoon. Pretty unproductive clouds. Now there might be a spritz or a sprinkle here and there this evening. No big deal, and uh, there will be some clearing of the sky tonight. Uh, the satellite picture shows some holes in the clouds developing in southern Ohio and even to our north and west across southern Michigan, and where we have the highest confidence that the wind will go calm and the sky will go mostly clear. We have some frost advisories out tonight. The National Weather Service offices in Wilmington, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh all issued uh, some frost advisories for parts of their areas, including the I-70 corridor from Dayton to Columbus to Zanesville, as nearby as Carroll County to have a frost advisory out. Now, in our TV viewing area, I can't rule out a patch or two of frost first thing tomorrow morning, uh, particularly in some of the sheltered valleys uh, south of 224 especially. Let's take a look at uh, some temperatures at daybreak on our Tuesday. Now, most temperatures will be around 37, 38, 39 degrees. But localized areas in those sheltered valleys where the wind goes calm and if the sky stays clear for four hours or so, you might see a 35, 36 tomorrow morning and maybe, maybe some patches of frost. But this will not be a big deal in most spots. Not a killing frost, that kind of thing. Wouldn't worry too much about it if you still have some hanging baskets outside and things like that. Uh, we'll have much better chances of killing frosts and freezes later on this month and of course heading into November. This will be very light and very spotty and not a widespread thing if we see any frost tomorrow morning, first thing in the morning. All right, let's uh, look ahead towards the next couple of days and what we can expect on our Tuesday is some sun in the morning, but I think the clouds will win the battle as we get into the afternoon. There will, there will be plenty of sun down towards I-70 and points to the south. It's bright and sunny down here on Tuesday, but this low pressure system spinning off to our north, we're close enough to it in northeast Ohio and northwest PA that will be in the clouds for a lot of the afternoon. Then the sky will clear some tomorrow evening and into the overnight, leading to a pretty decent day on Wednesday before clouds return. This is a warm front and a pretty strong warm front heading our way for Thursday. Now this front will usher in clouds and pretty decent chance for some rain later Wednesday night, first thing Thursday morning. There are some model differences as we get into the daylight hours on Thursday. Some of the modeling would suggest we get away with a mostly dry afternoon on Thursday as this front pushes far enough to the north. Some of the modeling stalls the front a little bit farther to the south on Thursday, keeping rain chances perhaps around and might not be quite as, as mild Thursday afternoon. So Thursday's forecast remains kind of a tough one. I do think the front will clear us to the north for sure on Friday, leading to a pretty nice end of the week on Friday. But this is a very amplified pattern both now and in the future. Here's a look at the jet stream flow as we go into the upcoming weekend. Very wavy jet stream here. Kind of that omega block pattern reasserting itself. And, you know, last week when we, when we had the 80s, we were in this part of the omega block. That's the good part to be in. You don't want to be under the troughs or the dips. And we'll be in that kind of a pattern, it looks like, from the weekend into next week. And so while we will see a modest temperature recovery during the second half of this week, it's going to last a couple of days, and then we're right back to that kind of Novemberish chill, it looks like, for some time from Sunday through at least the first half of next week. All right, coming up this weekend, we have what's called an annular eclipse, solar eclipse, uh, visible across North America. Now, an annular eclipse, not the same thing as an annual eclipse. It's not the same word. It means a different thing. Annular means that the eclipse is occurring when the, the moon is at its farthest point from the Earth in its orbit, so the moon's a little smaller, so it's not gonna cover the entire sun's disk. Um, and so you get kind of a ring of fire effect, where there will be a, a total eclipse in places like Reno, Nevada, Albuquerque, New Mexico, near El Paso, Texas, Midland, Odessa, Texas, in western parts of Texas. Uh, they'll have that kind of ring of fire where the moon almost covers the sun completely, but just enough that you get kind of a, a 
kind of a ring of light right around the moon. So it's not as complete as kind of a typical total solar eclipse. Now in our viewing area, it will not be any kind of total solar eclipse, but it will be a partial one uh, with the moon covering the sun's face by about 44% of the uh, sun's face being covered at maximum eclipse time. The timing on this, the uh, partial eclipse begins at about 1151 with kind of the upper right portion of the uh, sun being covered at first. When we reach maximum eclipse, it's kind of the uh, lower and to the right quadrant of the sun that will be uh, covered the most. And then the eclipse ends, the partial eclipse, at about 2.30 p.m. with kind of that lower left corner of the uh, sun, or quadrant of the sun, if you will, um, being covered last. Now, the question for us is, will we be able to see this? And that's an open question at this point. I think the clouds are going to win the battle most of the day Saturday, but some of the modeling, including what I'm showing you here, is kind of suggestive of a little bit of a dry punch trying to come in maybe at a fortunate time. You know, this is right around eclipse time, right around midday. I think it'll be a cloudy start, a cloudy end of the day. Right around midday, maybe we get some partial clearing. No, this is going to last a couple of hours. This isn't going to just last a few minutes. Um, and so maybe we'll have a chance to check this out. Common sense will apply, though, of course, with a solar eclipse. Don't look at the sun. Uh, you'll need eclipse glasses or an eclipse viewer. We'll have some uh, tips in this video and on social media and on our newscast as well for viewing solar eclipses. And, you know, this is kind of a... Dr uh, later this week, I should say. You know, this is kind of a dry run for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity coming our way next April. On the 8th of April, we have a total solar eclipse visible. The path of totality runs right through northern Ohio. This is going to be a big, big deal if the weather cooperates, of course. In early April, that's kind of a dicey proposition. But yeah, this is kind of a dry run for what should be a remarkable event if the weather cooperates in early April. But it's a partial eclipse visible this time around if the clouds cooperate this coming Saturday. Again, much more on the eclipse as we get a little, a little bit closer and we'll have a firmer grasp as to uh, about the cloud situation on Saturday as we get a little bit closer to the weekend. In the meantime, thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks tonight. I'll see you right back here on Tuesday.